2003 BMW 325i E46 valve cover replacement. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you through the steps of replacing it. To get started removing the valve cover, the first step I'm gonna do is remove this cowling section right here. I'm gonna pop this little cover off, open actually. So what I do is take a little flat blade screwdriver, kind of pop it open like this, and that'll flare the tabs open. And just pull it off. Now you're gonna take the cable to take the cabin air filter out. So you're just gonna twist these little tabs here until they pop up like this. And then lift the little uh, the cabin filter out like that, pull it out and set aside. Next, we're gonna remove the four torque screws that are holding it on. So they're gonna be here, 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 and here. And once you get those all unbolted, this whole tray will lift out and you'll set it aside. Next, we're gonna remove the top, the two top engine covers. So you need a screwdriver to pop the covers out. And then underneath there'll be a bolt. After removing the bolts, you wanna remove the, the top cover first. You're just gonna lift and you're gonna to pull towards the passenger side of the car. As you, after removing the nuts, on the lower shield, you'll remove the oil filter cap. And then you'll take the cover and lift off. And then I, I like to reinstall the cap. That way when you're working on it, no, no debris falls in. Next, we need to get the vent line off the valve cover. So you can put your fingers on the back side and on the top and squeeze and it will flare open. But these can get really, really brittle. And, um, and sometimes they, they get really difficult to come off. And then once you get a little gap, you can also put a little pocket screwdriver right here and give it a little twist and that'll help pull it out. So after you get the, the vent line disconnected, that's as far as you need to do. You don't need to pull it out of the car or anything. Just leave it just like that. The next step is we're going to unplug all six of our coils and remove the coils. So you're going to flip the little the coil door open, pull the wire off. And then what I like to do is use a little, pla uh, a little small pry bar or a long screwdriver and you pry under the coil like that and then you can pull the coil out and set aside. And what I do, what I like to do is I like to take these coils out and put them, lay them on my bench in order in the way I took them out. So you're gonna remove all six of them and set them aside. Okay, after removing all six of the coils, the next step is to remove the ground straps for the coils. So there's gonna be a couple eight millimeter nuts here that you're gonna take off and pull the wires off and set those aside. Now that you've got the ground wires disconnected, in a couple of spots on the uh, on this wire limb holder, you'll see these little catches like this. So what we're going to do is we get a, a small screwdriver or a pry bar, and right next to the, that little catch, you'll pry and you'll pop the cover up like that, and you'll and you'll take the wiring harness and set it aside over here. The next step is going to be to take the oxygen sensor wires here and pull them up, and they're, they they they'll. They lay in these little tracks back here, so you're going to pull the wires up, and then they're attached down here. They're attached to these little metal holders. You can either you can either flare them open, or you just pop the metal holders off like that. That's what I like to do. And then uh, anything that they're laying in like this, and you're going to push it towards the passenger side of the car. Once you get the wire looms pulled out, you can actually unplug them if you want to. You can pull them out of their little brackets right here. Use the squeeze tabs, and then you can just flip the wiring out of your way and the way these kind of fit in these little catches here is you have to kind of twist them and then pull them out now that the auction sensors are out of the way and i just kind of flipped them over here into this little pocket over here and uh now what we're going to do is remove all the uh the uh nuts and bolts that are holding the uh, valve cover on there's about 15 of them in all together so i'm going to use my little uh, cordless ratchet here this thing is amazing if you guys haven't seen these yet uh I'll leave a link for it in the description of the video. You guys uh, should look into getting one of these. These things are awesome. It saved me so much time. And then you're going to remove all the, uh, the nuts. And also underneath the nuts is, is a washer and a rubber grommet. And we're also going to change that grommet out too. So you're going to use a flat blade screwdriver to pry them out. So when you pop them out, they're going to look like that. So you're just going to start in the, uh, uh, one spot and just kind of work your way around the perimeter of the valve cover and uh, take them all out and then down the middle you're going to remove the one here 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 and here now that you got all the bolts removed you're going to take a little pry bar like this or a flat blade screwdriver what i like to do is right here on the vanos there's a little spot where you can get the uh the pry bar under and pry and you need to pry it up now you can get your fingers around that the valve cover and you work it around and pull it 
pull it up and off. Once you break that seal and that valve cover and get it popped up, then you should be able to just lift it up and out of the car. Now that you got the valve cover off, a lot of the old valve cover will stay in the uh, car, so you need to go retrieve that and make sure that it didn't fall down into the valve train. So you make sure you pick off all the old portions of the valve cover. And uh, these, like I said, they like, to, they like to stick around these little bolt holes in the center here. So uh, especially check there, and then if any of the debris fell in there, retrieve it. And then you're going to just clean the uh, surface around the cylinder head. And I like to use just rags and uh, part cleaner. And when you do, you want to try to clean it where the debris fall, goes away from the uh, not falling into the cylinder head. So as I was picking out the uh, pieces of the valve cover, one of the flipped underneath the cam here. And if you can see it down there, the black piece. And one of the tips I want to bring you is how to get those out. What I do is I take a screwdriver like this and I put a blob of grease on the end of it. And then I, I will take... And I'll go down there and I'll stick it on the plastic and it'll stick and to the you can retrieve the plastic little chunks like that. So after uh, getting the cylinder head cleaned up, then you're going to remove all the old gaskets from the uh, valve cover itself. And uh, they have the tube seals down the middle, so you're also going to change these out. And as you can see, the valve covers, they just get rock hard and brittle and that's why they start le leaking. So you go ahead and remove all that and then you, then you wash it up. And also what you want to also check for is kind of look down it and look and make sure that the valve cover is not warped. It doesn't look like an airplane prop. If it look if it's really warped, then I recommend you uh, uh, replace the valve cover itself. Also, when you're cleaning up the cylinder head, if your valve covers were leaking down the tube seal, the the spark plug holes here will be full of oil, and you'll have to clean that out. And I what are, I don't recommend you take the spark plugs out and let all the oil drain into the um, into the cylinder head. What, what I like to do is I take a can of uh, brick clean, spray cleaner, and I'll spray it in the actual hole. And then what I'll do is I'll take a, a shop rag and cover it up, and then I'll use an air blower like this and stick it kind of in there. And I'll blow it, and I'll catch all the debris in, in the rag as it blows it out. And then after I get like 90% of it, I might have to do that a couple times to clean it out. Now that our valve cover is all cleaned up, what I'm going to do is install the gasket and I'm going to show you the part numbers here. I will link these parts up into the uh, description of the video so you can look for them there in case you need to get them. These are the, uh, the rubber grommets that go on the top of the valve cover. You're also going to want to replace those too. And then you're just going to install the install them into the grooves of the, of the valve cover like this and go all the way around. And then also it's going to have tube seals that are going to go in the middle. So. Uh, You'll, you'll install those too. Okay, after uh, installing the gasket back into the cover and the tube seals back into the cover, the next step you want to do is you want to put a little black silicone in the corners of the cam lobes on all four. And uh, the type of silicone we like to use here at uh, How To Automotive is uh, it's made by Permatect. It's called the White Stuff. This stuff works amazing. I'll, leave the, I'll link this up in the description also. Now we're going to reinstall the gasket and we've got to be careful not to, to snag the cam lobes on anything as it goes in, in that'll knock the gasket off and when these, when these uh, can lobes, they got to fit directly in these little, little moons here, half moons here. So you want to hold the, the valve cover up floating as high as you can and then drop the valve cover down. So you want it as high as you can like this, and then once you get it kind of in the ballpark and lined up, then you want it to drop straight down like that. And then you want to check and make sure that the, uh, the gasket sealed into the moons. And you also want to make sure that nothing got caught in between the gasket. So before I put any of the, the uh, grommets and the bolts back in, I'm going to take my dental mirror and I'm going to follow the gas, the valve cover all the way around and make sure that the uh, gasket is in place all the way around the, the valve cover especially in the back corners where is where they like to, to fall off the most so you'll you'll get your dental mirror in there and the flashlight and you'll thoroughly check and make sure that the gasket is in place all the way around so now I'm going to take my uh, my new grommet washer and, and nut and go ahead and start those and I'm gonna start them all by hand 
and that way you can wiggle the valve cover kind of maneuver it back and forth a little bit to get them all started and I'll do all all 15 of them the bolts with the studs when it went in the middle so when I tighten up these uh, bolts on the valve covers I like to use quarter inch uh, tools you, it's because you're gonna do this by feel So you'll run it in until it until it gets snug, and you'll feel as you're tightening this down, you'll feel the, the cover seating down in there, and you'll feel the uh, little rubber bushing kind of flattening out a little bit. So I'm using the the torque at the edge of the uh, ratchet here, and that's it. That's all you really need to do. And so, so you're going to start middle, outside, outside, middle, outside, outside, middle outside outside and you're gonna go up to the front here and go middle outside outside middle outside outside and you're gonna torque them all down in that pattern okay now you can go ahead and plug in the vent line right here just push it on to you here next I'm gonna take my two oxygen sensors and uh, I'm gonna plug them back into the uh, the little metal brackets back onto the valve cover itself plug those back on route the wires through route it around the back of the uh, valve cover into the little slots that it came out of and then plug them back in and resecure them on onto the fuel rail here. Now that the oxygen sensor wires are resecured with the little metal brackets, route it around, plug back in and mount it back into the fuel rails. We're going to take our, uh, now you're going to take the wire loom for the coils. So you'll line the wire loom up like this. So in the corner it'll, it'll, it'll butt up right here like that. And once you get it you line up the little tabs and once you get them all lined up you just press it on like that and it'll lock into place then you can go ahead and put the eight millimeter uh, the ground straps and the eight millimeter uh, nuts back on and tighten those down you just want to snug them up you don't want to snap them off they're really easy to do that so just snug them up after you're getting the wire loom resecured and the ground uh, the ground wires re bolted back up you're gonna take your coils and you're gonna install them into the tubes and then you'll they have the little marks right here where you line up the so you line them up and you push them in all the way until they seat then you're going to take the wires and you're going to plug it in and push as hard as you can towards the uh, coil and at the same time push the little the little door down and lock it into place now that you got all six of the coils plugged back in what i recommend you do is double check your oil level make sure it's good to go and fire the car off and make sure there's no leaks or anything or misfires or and then uh, after you're satisfied that it's not leaking we can go ahead and reinstall the top engine cover and the cowling and I'll walk you through those steps put the top cover back on you're gonna take the oil cap back off go ahead and slide that big back on and line up the the uh, grommets and you can go ahead and put the um, the 10 millimeter bolts back in it and uh, snug them up and put the cap back on and uh, the two covers now you're going to take this cover and these little ears are going to hook under here so you're going to slide it in and then drop it down and go ahead and start the uh, two bolts and put the caps on. Now we're going to take the lower cowling piece here and you're going to kind of put it in at an angle like this and rotate it upwards, kind of rotate it like that and then you'll line up the uh, the uh, the Torx bolts and go ahead and start those. So after getting it secure, you go ahead and put your cabin filter back in. So then you'll pick the little the, the top cover here, and slide it in, and then you'll take the tabs, push them, and lock them into place. Now we're going to take the battery cable here and hook it into the uh, little catches here, and then the wire loom will pop into place like this so then this cover I like to kind of do it the opposite when we it was hooked on on the bottom of the first and we peeled it off the top so what we're going to do is put it on the top like that and then push the bottom around until it clicks and once you get that resecured that'll complete the job of replacing the valve cover I'll put links in the description for all the tools and parts that I use in this video. I'm Brian Essa from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. I encourage you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And I'd like to thank you again for watching.